Don't you want to marry me? I'm going to marry Melanie. But you can't, not if you care for me. Oh, my dear, why must you make me say things that will hurt you? How can I make you understand? You're so young and unthinking, you don't know what marriage means. I know I love you and I want to be your wife. You don't love Melanie. She's like me, Scott. She's part of my blood and we understand each other. But you love me. How could I help loving you? You who have all the passion for life that I lack. But that kind of love isn't enough to make a successful marriage for two people who are as different as we are. Why don't you say it, you coward? You're afraid to marry me. You'd rather live with that silly little fool who can't open a mouth except say yes, no, and raise a parcel of mealy mouth bread just like... You mustn't say things like that about Melanie. Who are you to tell me I must? You led me on. You, you made me believe you wanted to marry me. Now, Scarlett, be fair. I never at any time... You did. It's true, you did. I hate you till I die. I can't think of anything bad enough to call you. The war started? Uh, sir, you... You should have made your presence known. In the middle of that beautiful love scene? That wouldn't have been very tactful, would it? But don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. Sir, you are no gentleman. And you, miss, are no lady. Oh. But don't think that I hold that against you. Ladies have never held any charm for me. First you take a low, common advantage of me, then you insult me. I meant it as a compliment. And I hope to see more of you when you're free of the spell of the elegant Mr. Wilkes. He doesn't strike me as half good enough for a girl of your... Uh, what was it? Your passion for living? How dare you? You aren't fit to wipe his boots. <laughs> and you were going to hate him for the rest of your life. <laughs> The situation's very simple. The Yankees can't fight and we can. You're right. Don't even be a battle. That's what I think. They'll just turn and run every time. One southerner can lick 20 Yankees. Well, I will finish him in one battle. Gentlemen can always fight better than rattle. Yes, uh, gentlemen always fight better than rattle. And what does the captain of our troops say? Well, gentlemen, if Georgia fights, I go with her. But like my father, I hope that the Yankees will let us leave the Union in peace. But Ashley, well, Ashley, they've insulted us. You can't mean you don't want war. Most of the miseries of the world were caused by wars. And when the wars were over, no one ever knew what they were about. Why, Ashley, if it wasn't... No, 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 gentlemen. Mr. Butler's been up north, I hear. Don't you agree with us, Mr. Butler? I think it's hard winning a war with words, gentlemen. What do you mean, sir? I mean, Mr. Hamilton, there's not a cannon factory in the whole South. What difference does that make, sir, to a gentleman? I'm afraid it's going to make a great deal of difference to a great many gentlemen, sir. Are you hinting, Mr. Butler, that the Yankees can lick us? No, I'm not hinting. I'm saying very plainly that the Yankees are better equipped than we. They've got factories, shipyards, coal mines, and a fleet to bottle up our harbors and starve us to death. All we've got is cotton and slaves and arrogance. That's treacherous. I refuse to listen to any renegade talk. I'm sorry if the truth offends you. Apologies aren't enough, sir. I hear you were turned out of West Point, Mr. Red Butler, and that you ought to receive any decent family in Charleston, not even your own. I apologize again for all my shortcomings. Mr. Wilkes, perhaps you won't mind if I walk about and look over your place. I seem to be spoiling everybody's brandy and cigars and dreams of victory. what you could expect from somebody like Red Butler. You did everything but call him out. He refused to fight. Not quite that, Charles. He just refused to take advantage of you. Take advantage of me? Yes, he's one of the best shots in the country, as he's proved a number of times, against steadier hands and cooler heads than yours. Well, I'll show him. No, no, please, don't go tweaking his nose anymore. You may be needed for more important fighting, Charles. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Butler is our guest. I think I'll just show him around. Here. <laughs> Uh, 
But, Red, I really can't go on accepting these gifts, though you are awfully kind. I'm not kind. I'm just tempting you. I never give anything without expecting something in return. I always get paid. Well, if you think I'll marry you, just pay for the bonnet. I won't. Don't flatter yourself. I'm not a marrying man. Well, I won't kiss you for it, either. Open your eyes and look at me. No, I don't think I will kiss you. Although you need kissing badly. That's what's wrong with you. You should be kissed and often, and by someone who knows how. Oh, and I suppose you think you are the proper person. I might be, if the right moment ever came. You're a conceited, black-hearted vomit, Red Butler. I don't know why I let you come and see me. <laughs> I'll tell you why, Scarlett. Because I'm the only man over 16 and under 60 who's around to show you a good time. I'll never understand or forgive myself. And if a bullet gets me, so help me, I'll laugh at myself for being an idiot. But there's one thing I do know, and that is that I love you, Scarlett. In spite of you and me and the whole silly world going to pieces around us, I love you. Because we're alike, bad lots, both of us. Selfish and shrewd, but able to look things in the eyes and call them by their right names. Don't hold me like that. Scarlett, look at me. I love you more than I've ever loved any woman. And I've waited longer for you than I've ever waited for any woman. Let me alone! Here's a soldier of the South who loves you, Scarlet. Wants to feel your arms around him. Wants to carry the memory of your kisses into battle with him. Never mind about loving me. You're a woman sending a soldier to his death with a beautiful memory. Scarlet, kiss me. Kiss me. Everybody was right. You, you are a gentleman. A minor point at such a moment. Here. If anyone lays a hand on that nag, shoot him. But don't make a mistake and shoot the nag. Oh, go on. I want you to go. I hope a cannonball lands slap on you. I hope you're blown into a million pieces. Never I... mind the rest. I follow your general idea. And when I'm dead on the order of my country, I hope your conscience hurts you. Goodbye, Scarlet. <laughs> Be possible that... It won't be possible, Red. That you've grown a woman's heart. A real woman's heart. I have, Red. I know I have. You know, it's worth being in jail just to hear you say that. It's well worth it. You can drop the moonlight in Magnolia, Scarlet. So things have been going well at Terra, have they? Yes. What have you been doing with your hands? Oh, just because I went riding last week without my gloves. These don't belong to a lady. You've been working with them like a field hand. Why did you lie to me, and what are you really up to? Now, Red, you... In another minute, I'd almost believe you cared something. But I do care. Suppose we get down to the truth. You want something from me, and you want it badly enough to put on quite a show in your velvets. What is it? Money? I want $300. Pay the taxes on Tara. Oh, Red, I did lie to you when I said everything was all right. Things are just as bad as they possibly could be. And you've got millions, Red. What collateral are you offering? Oh, oh my ear bobs. I'm not interested. Mortgage on Tara. What would I do with a farm? Oh, you wouldn't lose. I'd pay you back out of next year's cotton. Not good enough. Maybe nothing better? You once said you loved me. If you still love me, Red. You haven't forgotten I'm not a marrying man. No, I haven't forgotten.
You're not worth $300. You'll never mean anything but misery to any man. Go on, insult me. I don't care what you say, only give me the money. I won't let Tara go. I can't let her go while there's a breath left in my body. Oh, Red, won't you please give me the money? I couldn't give you the money if I wanted to. My funds are in Liverpool, not in Atlanta. If I tried drawing a draft, the Yankees would be on me like a duck on a June bug. So you see, my dear, you've abased yourself to no purpose. Oh! Oh! No! Here, 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 stop. Stop. Oh. Yankees to see you later. Take your hands on me, you skunk. You knew what I was going to say before I started. You knew you wouldn't lend me the money, and yet, and yet you let me go on. I enjoyed hearing what you had to say. Cheer up. You can come to my hanging, and I'll remember you in my will. I'll come to your hanging. The only thing I'm afraid of is they won't hang you in time to pay the taxes on tariff. some dignity to remember out of our marriage. Spare us this last. This last? Oh, Red, do listen to me. I, I must have loved you for years, only I was such a stupid fool I didn't know you. Please believe me. You must care. Melly said you did. I believe you. And what about Ashley Wilkes? I, I never really loved Ashley. You certainly gave a good imitation of it up to this morning. Now, Scarlet, I tried everything. If you'd only met me halfway, even when I came back from London. Oh, I was so glad to see you. I was, Red, but, but you were so nasty. And then when you were sick, and it was all my fault. I hoped against hope that you called for me, but you didn't. I wanted you. I wanted you desperately, but, but I didn't mean you wanted me. It seems we've been at cross purposes, doesn't it? But it's no use now. As long as there was Bonnie, there was a chance we might be happy. I like to think that Bonnie was you. A little girl again, before the war and poverty had done things to you. She was so like you, and I could pet her and spoil her as I wanted to spoil you. But when she went, she took everything. Oh, Red. Red, please don't say that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. My darling, you're such a child. You think that by saying I'm sorry, all the past can be corrected. Here, take my handkerchief. Never in any crisis of your life have I known you to have a handkerchief. Red, Red, where are you going? I'm going to Charleston, back where I belong. Please, please take me with you. No, I'm through with everything here. I want peace. I want to see if somewhere there isn't something left in life of charm and grace. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. I only know that I love you. That's your misfortune. <laughs> Red. 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 You go. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.
can be Katie Scarlet and Hannah the Terror doesn't mean anything to you. When man's the only thing that matters, it's the only thing that lasts. Something you love better than me, though you may not know it. Terror. It's this for which you get your strength. Better is a terror. When man's the only thing that matters, it's the only thing that lasts. Something you love better than me, though you may not know it. Tara, this from which you get your strength. The red earth of Tara. Why, man's the only thing that matters. Something you love better than me. The red earth of Tara. 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 Thank you.